You guys ready? Let's get to run. All right, fighters, we're going to throw one. We're going to throw the jab cross. So one, two. We're going to do that for four by 30 seconds. There's 30 seconds left in between. So I'll play through this one. We're going to hit the heavy bag. Keep it nice and strong. We want to throw a medium pace with strong intent. You see, right before you get to the bag, put a little more flex in the front of the bag. You're trying to keep that energy in the bag for those 30 seconds left. So one, two. And the round starts. Right now, let's go. Seconds ready. The last 10 seconds, they're gonna give you the option to go a little bit harder. Let's go. One, two. Thank you. 
Slip left, one, one, two, one. Okay, four left. Again, if you run that last jab too much, it's not easy. Three, four, three. Slip left. One, one, two, one. A little harder, you guys. Ready? Let's go. Hold us. 
This is John from The Bible Project. This week on the podcast, we're going to do something new. As you know, the Bible was not written in English. It was written in Hebrew, Greek, and a tiny bit of Aramaic. The translations are pretty good, but even so, sometimes the English Bible is used that don't carry the full weight and nuance of the original word. Now, there's so many words that we use that translate the Bible, but they don't mean what those words mean. Problem is we read. We read in modern meaning into the English words. We're going to try to step inside the imagination of the ancient writers as they use these words to describe the world that they lived in and the experiences they had. Here we go. Conversation today, prototype, brand new type of video series um, that we're calling Word Study. Yeah. We're going to take biblical words yeah. that were in Hebrew or Greek or Greek. Uh, or a little bit of the Hebrew Bible. Yeah, just Aramaic. Yeah. <laughs> so we'll do yeah. put the word in its original language mm-hmm. and we'll discuss that word. Mm-hmm. And this will be kind of a like a, a Bible dictionary kind of series. Yeah, like a video Bible dictionary. Yeah, yeah. And it'll be these short yeah. little two minute. Yeah, things. you know, uh, biblical vocabulary has this paradoxical like <clears throat> their biblical vocabulary has so shaped the English language mm. over the last four hundred years. But some words. Passed into English and they become so bland that they, we don't even know if they're original in the Bible. Yeah. 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 Right. The English word that we use yeah. isn't the Hebrew word. Right. But it's, but it's this old English. Yeah. It, may, it, it might even be influenced by the biblical. Yeah. Translation from a long time ago, but now there's so many words that we use that occur in our translations of the Bible, but they don't mean now what those words mean. And that's the 
problem is we read. We read in modern reading. The first word we're going to give is to give you a word for what? Because uh, the first half a dozen of these videos, uh, we will be making a little mini series on tapping one of the most famous verses in the Old Testament, um, which is prayer. Well, it became a prayer. It's a line in the Latin book. And that's because the word Shema is the first word in this phrase. Which means listen. It means listen. And the, and the verse is uh, Hear, O Israel, or listen, O Israel. The Lord is our God, the Lord is Lord. As, and as for you, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your being, with all your strength. Yeah. However, what translation is that? That's like your translation. Yeah. Heart, soul, and strength. Yeah, soul yeah. is the traditional. traditional. But what we want to do is unpack this verse word by word. Yep. And, and so here, O oh, Israel, will be yeah. the first word. Yeah. And then we'll talk about the word the Lord. The Lord is the divine name of God. The divine name of God. The name of God. And then we'll talk about love, yep. heart, yep. soul, soul. <laughs> and strength. And strength. And, and, and yeah, it's going to be so good. Yeah. Yeah, this is that's our pastor. Yeah. So this so we'll let's first talk about the word Shema here. Yeah. Shema. 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 Uh, yeah, no no grappy no, eight. No like no, 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 you are. Oh right. Yeah. Yeah, Shema. it's a pretty simple word as well. Yeah. Uh, actually technically, uh, there's a silent letter after the A. Um Way back when, you know how you, you, when you say the word horn, you close your throat. Or you, at the, before you even say anything. Oh yeah. Pay attention to your, what your throat does before you say the word horn. Yeah, it can drop. You close your throat. And you can push air out. Horn. Oh, oh, oh yeah. You close your throat. Oh. So that closing oh. of the throat. Oh, that's a, is a symbol. Is a represented by a letter. Oh. Uh, um, and then it's what you do after the last uh, you close your throat at the end. Oh. So it's got this hard stop. Yeah, it's called a, uh, a guttural close. Mm -hmm. oh. We don't have that in English, do we? We don't. No. Well, we have. We sometimes use the same muscle. But at the end of a word? The but word. at the end of a word. <laughs> okay. I don't know, I'm trying to think of words that end in vowel. Anyway, <clears throat> so Shema. I love that. Um, we're thinking of words that end in vowel and spaghetti. Well, it's, uh, it's one of the only words that end in vowel. Oh, wow. Uh, oh, And then it's a kind of thing. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay, so uh, Shema. Uh, with, it's a very super common word, there's hundreds of times in the Bible, uh, and it's the word to hear, or listen. It's like in English. So if I'm calling to my kids, get their attention, they're like, come Yeah, listen. Listen. Yeah, listen. Uh, Pay attention. So there's many, well, pay attention is different than listen. Mm -hmm. Pay attention, I mean, yeah, pay attention requires that you listen, but it also means you can listen. And in English, we have a separate phrase. Pay attention. <laughs> um, in, in Hebrew, we're, we're getting ahead of ourselves. First, there's this classic proverb. Ears that shema, and eyes that see. The Lord is making them. Ears that shema. Proverbs go through your ears. Proverbs, 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 the ears they 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 take in some way. In some way they need to see the signal. So that our brains can talk about that. So that's that's simple. We don't really need to lots of concepts. However, um, the word Shema also gets used to mean more than just 
what you're being here for. Um, it also can be mean what you just said. So it's just opposite. In English, we have pepper thin. Listen, yeah. then we have pay attention. But we also use the word listen yeah. to mean pay attention. Yeah. We don't mean, hey, just let sound waves come in your ears. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. It, it can mean that. But it all, we usually, by context, indicate the yeah. Listen. But we also have a separate phrase. Yeah. In Hebrew, but in Hebrew, you don't say that. No. Um, so, we just one example of Jacob Random. This is from uh, Genesis chapter 30. A story about Jacob and um, Leah. Leah is one of Jacob's four wives. And she does two sisters. She does three. And she does three together. She does love. Yeah, four of them. Two of them. And, uh, so she has a son, and she needs him, Shimon, Shimon, which is a word play on Shimon, um, and then what she says is, the Lord has Shema, that I am unloved, so she says, the Lord has heard, heard that I am unloved, he's so paying attention, obviously, yeah, he's more than just you are, the story, yeah. the point is, it's not like, like a herd of, like a crow <laughs> pawn that would, yeah, yeah, he was pretty sick. Yeah, what it meant. yeah, and what she, the fact that she got pregnant and had a child, she interprets that as the Lord showing his attention to her. That she showed him the fact that he left her by her. This is what pay attention, you know, I was to do it. It seems like what, um, pay attention, is doing is it's saying um, don't don't just listen. You're not just hearing. You are interpreting mm-hmm. and you are seeing whatever that message is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Which is closely linked then to the um, next meaning. Oh. You also mean it, which is not bad. Which is if you listen to something, you drop your attention. Oh, okay. You focus on it. Okay, so just focus. Um, but then, if you listen and pay attention and focus on something, you're likely to do something about it, to actually act as a response to what you know, to it. And in Hebrew, that, all, that idea also is covered by the Hebrew um, so, so, it's, so, so it means not only should hear, yeah. not only to then pay attention and focus on what you are hear and see, but it also come on to respond. I mean, to do something about it you just know it and you hear it. So if I'm, if I'm walking through the woods and I hear um, someone screaming for help. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And all I do is just notice a scream and I don't know if it's a bear yeah. or you a person. You might even pay attention to it. Well, like, well, first, I just hear it. First you hear it. Just, I, it's, I, and I just, I'm hearing the birds, I'm hearing the, the wind, I'm hearing, and I hear a scream. I'm just listening. I'm just hearing things. Yeah. That's the first meaning. Second meaning is it gets my attention. I hear that, and I'm like, oh, that wasn't good. Yeah. I need, I need to focus well, on that that's scream. That's the way I said. So that pay attention to Shema is my difficult thing. And then the third meaning would be, I hear it. Yeah. I focus on it, and then I decide I need to go help out. You actually run towards the situation. And all three of those actions are shemah. covered by the word shema. So I shema yeah. by just kind of hearing it with all the other background noise. Mm-hmm. I shema when I focus on it, and I shema when I just like run and help. That's right. And it, if you didn't run and help, you didn't shema. I didn't actually shema. Yeah. Yeah. So for example, so but I did. So like, yeah, yeah, right. You did. I mean, you technically heard, but in the deepest sense of your word, you shouldn't come out. It's just, it look at some examples in the way words are actually used. So this is all over the psalm. There's one on the first in and in Psalm 7. The poet says, Shema my voice when I call, O Lord. Be merciful and respond to me. So you're asking God to listen. Mm-hmm. It's synonymous with show me mercy. Mm-hmm. This is synonymous with do, do something. It's all the same thing. You're obviously not just asking God to 
Yeah. Don't listen to this like an album. Yeah. Just please God do something. Help me. Um, and when God helps you, so that's how you know you come on. Because it's like I I put on a, a noise machine for the kids on time. And they're, oh. they're hearing it. Oh, why do I? Yeah, why do I? Uh, yeah, it's a machine and it makes the sound of like Oh yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like a real Yeah. Yeah, actually, it's different. 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 It's but there's no other word. If, it, well, if you're listening, what would a Hebrew person be doing if they're um, listening to background? Oh, words? I got it. Well, this is how words work in languages. It's that, um, uh, kind of like our heaven and earth circles, yeah. and then overlapping circles, and diagram. That's a common key to linguistics. Yeah. You have separate words. Um, like like uh, in English, hear and listen. It's a separate word, but they over circles overlap. Big but if you were to start, so you could use the word in one sense, you could do it in another sense. Yeah, but um, you would have to do a full study of this language for it. It's fully overlap with the idea. So, are there other words um, for pay attention that don't mm-hmm. simply mean to listen? <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, this one, this one, this one, this one. that means to notice. So, um, you notice. By either hearing or looking at the okay. um, But Shema is the broadest word that is here. And it overlaps with the uh, word. And it also overlaps with the word like to act, to talk, to be, to do something. So the word Shema overlaps with all the other fields. And it's all it's just one word. And you can use it. And it's similar. English has has similar. Like if I, yeah, if I ask my five year old, um, yeah, to like turn up the yogurt and he just mm-hmm. and go on the floor. Mm-hmm. If he doesn't do it, I'll ask him, why aren't you listening? Mm-hmm. With me, why aren't you acting? And he could be like, I did listen. Yes, <laughs> yes. Yeah, so. And you're like, no. Yeah. You didn't <laughs> actually listen. Yeah. Okay. Gotcha. So it's very similar to how the movie is. Okay, here's a, here's another interesting example. Um, this is when Israel is at the foot of Mount Sinai. They've been rescued out of Egypt, and um, they're about to enter into this really formal covenant thing. So yeah, this is uh, the story in Exodus chapter 19. Um, and this is the significant line that says, if you Shema me and keep my covenant, then out of all the nations will be in possession. Even though all the earth belongs to me, will be a king of the nation. So this is about Israel becoming a different nation. Q. 
Hear my cry, O God. Listen to my prayer. From the end of the earth I call to you when my heart is faint. Lead me to the rock that is higher than I, for you have been my refuge and strong tower against the enemy. Let me dwell in your tent forever. Let me take refuge under the shelter of your wings. For you, O God, have heard my vows. You have given me the inheritance, the heritage of those who fear your name. Prolong the life of the king. May his years endure to all generations. May he be enthroned forever before God. Appoint steadfast love and faithfulness to watch over him. So will I ever sing praises to your name as I perform my vows day after day. Psalm 61.